If you're after a comparison between these two functionally identical cards, check out the video before this one in the cards above. If you want to know how much 16GB of VRAM really matters in 2024, we'll stick around. As a super brief catch up, this is the RX 7600, a card with 8GB of VRAM, and this is the RX 7600 XT, a card with 16GB of VRAM. Despite the naming difference, the core in these two cards is functionally identical, with the only real difference being a slightly higher power limit on the XT, although as we saw in the last video, there really wasn't much of a difference between them. With that said, in this video I want to focus on three games in particular. Starfield, as that did show a sizable performance difference, Cyberpunk, because it didn't, and Siege as an example of more esports style titles. I've tested these games at a bunch of different settings, and I've used hardware info to capture both the D3D VRAM usage and the system RAM usage. And we're gonna see what the deal is here. Let's start with Starfield, as that, at least in theory, should be the most interesting, as it did show a performance difference between the two cards. Something almost every other game I tested failed to do, uh, both at 1080p and 1440p. For these tests, they're all at 1440p though. On low settings, where I'd be expecting people with a 7600 or 7600 XT to be playing at, we do see a decent performance difference between the cards. But surprisingly, this doesn't seem related to VRAM. Both cards use functionally the same VRAM amount at 5.4GB for the XT and 5.2GB for the 7600. That is nowhere near either card's maximum, and looking at the system RAM usage, it's clear that the 7600 isn't just overflowing, as it ended up using less system RAM than the XT did. On the medium preset, we get the same performance advantage, at least in terms of a percentage, and again, it's functionally the same VRAM usage. In fact, the 7600 uses 100 megabytes more, both on average and at max, to deliver 14% less performance. Amazing. On the high preset, the performance advantage actually comes down, and the VRAM usage has increased to around 6 gigabytes. But that's still 2 gigabytes shy of the 7600's capacity, so clearly that isn't a problem. Again, the system RAM usage is higher on the XT, showing that the 7600's VRAM isn't spilling into system RAM. Lastly, at Ultra, we get the same 15% or so faster performance on the XT from the 7600, although the VRAM usage is still maxing out uh, the 7600 with just 6.5 gigabytes of usage at most between the two cards. System RAM usage is still lower on the 7600, so it's pretty, pretty clear that Starfield at 1440p anyway, even on Ultra settings, doesn't need more than 8GB of VRAM. Moving on to Cyberpunk, as we saw in the last video, there really wasn't much of a performance difference between the two cards, and unsurprisingly with all of the same settings, that hasn't changed. What is interesting is on low, the XT actually used less system RAM, by a full gigabyte, both on average and at maximum. Despite that, the reported VRAM usage was only 5.5GB for the 7600, so it's hard to believe that that higher RAM usage is from the VRAM spilling over. Let's look at some more of the settings to see if that trend continues. On the medium preset then, the RAM usage is functionally identical, as is the VRAM usage. RAM is sitting at 12.6GB for the XT and 13.5GB for the 7600, with VRAM being at 5.7 and 5.5 respectively. Those figures are functionally the same as the low preset, despite having 20 FPS lower performance on average. Despite that, there is still functionally no difference between the two cards. On high, we finally see a jump in VRAM usage, up to 6.8GB 
at most. And interestingly, the XT seems to catch up in system RAM usage, uh, and importantly for determining if the 7600 is using system RAM as VRAM, the system RAM usage hasn't moved at all between the settings for the 7600, despite the VRAM usage going up by a full gigabyte. To me, that suggests that it isn't using system RAM, at least yet anyway. Ultra is again remarkably similar in memory usage, with only a 15 FPS drop on average to denote any difference. Seriously, you would have a hard, you'd be hard pressed to work out which is which without that performance difference. Now to spice things up just a little bit and to give us any chance of exceeding that 8 gigabyte limit on the 7600, I stuck it on the ray tracing ultra preset. This isn't what you'd actually play on, especially on one of these cards, uh, but looking at the results, it does finally show us what we've been looking for. The XT used 8.8 gigabytes of VRAM, but the 7600 obviously doesn't have 8.8 gigabytes to spare, so system RAM went up accordingly. Importantly too, the XT system RAM usage didn't go up, so that gives us some confirmation that the 7600 did need to dip into RAM to get this working. It didn't dip that far though, with under one gigabyte of spillover. So for Cyberpunk, if you're playing at 1440p on Ray Tracing Ultra, yeah, you might need more than eight gigabytes of VRAM. But my god, don't play on Ray Tracing Ultra on these cards, it's a slideshow. As for Siege, as you might expect with this being a more esports style title, this is pretty well optimized, both for performance and for things like memory utilization. On low, both cards average functionally the same 322 FPS and use functionally the same VRAM at 4GB, although the XT did use 1GB more of system RAM. Not a huge difference though. On the medium preset, we do get a bit more VRAM usage at 4.6 to 4.7 gigabytes, and interestingly, it seems the XT had a bit less stability too, but like, there isn't much in it. Now, seeing as there isn't that much interesting here, I'm gonna skip straight to Ultra, where, well, there isn't much interesting here either. VRAM usage is now at 6 gigabytes, where the game reckoned more like 4 gigs in the settings menu, but the two cards used functionally the same amount, and the XT was consistently 1 gigabyte higher in uh, system RAM usage, so clearly the 7600 wasn't full. Performance remained the same between the two cards too, so in short, Siege only needs like 6 gigabytes of VRAM at most at 4040p, and realistically, anyone playing Siege even remotely competitively would be playing on medium or low anyway, so it really doesn't matter much here. If you've only got 4 gigabytes of VRAM, well that's more of a problem as even at low, uh, you know, on these cards at 1440p, they used a touch more than that, but if you have 6 or 8 gigabytes or more, your fight. So, do you need 16 gigabytes of VRAM in 2024? Well, at least for this class of card, no, <laughs> not really. At least for gaming at 1440p. If you're gaming at 4K, yeah, maybe. If you're gaming at ultra settings on more intensive games like Cyberpunk, again, yeah, maybe. But you wouldn't be buying, or you'd be buying a 7900 XTX or a 4090 for that, not a 7600. Now these figures are likely to grow over time, especially if we see a new generation of consoles that come with more memory, but at least for this class of card, like I said in the last video, you're more likely to want to upgrade the GPU core before you absolutely must have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, so unless you have another use case for that VRAM, like running AI tools, in fact, video on the cards, or productivity tasks like video editing, you might be better saving your cash and getting the 7600 instead. Of course, with that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. 
I will leave links to both of these cards in the description if you're interested. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this one, do hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other videos on the end cards. And you can also support the channel directly by buying my own hardware like the open source response time tool or open source latency testing tool at osrtt.com. And there's a load of other links in the description if you're interested. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.